Hello, my name is Paolo. Uh, this over uh, that, that, that's Jiro. Uh, you can see him in all his glory right there, live from the bridge. Um, today we're gonna do a little rundown through a thing I made. It's a space galaxy uh, shader thing. So basically, as you can see, as she's dancing, she has like a little universe inside of her. Uh, it gets like a little distorted around around her stuff. So it, it kind of gives this sort of like inner galaxy feel to her. So this is basically a cube map. And what it is, is basically six sides. And basically you have like the top, the bottom, the left, the right, and stuff like that. So it kind of wraps around you. And no matter which direction you're going to look in, this is going to look like it's always surrounding you. And that's the purpose of a cube map. It just kind of gives you like a, a radial space around you to, to show you. So if we look at it in, in Unity, so this is what it looks like in Unity, as you can see, as I spin it around, that is that same image that we just saw. And as I spin it around, you can see there's no sims and it just looks continuous. So generally you would use this for something like the skybox. So for example, I can go here to lighting in the environment. I can select this one I can say nebula. And as you can see, if we look around now, that's the skybox for the nebula. It doesn't make too much sense with the sun over there, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here is a similar effect, but instead of putting it around the world, I'm putting it inside a person. Uh, you can see as I move around, I can see the galaxy uh, basically inside of her. And it gives this little, this really cool, like, uh, I don't know, ascended, transcendental effect to things. Uh, so let me explain you how it works. In the shader, so first we calculate the direction. So we grab the position and this is the position of where the pixel we, we are drawing is. Then we grab the position of the camera, which is over here. We do uh, subtract to get the difference. So now we have the difference between those and that will give us like a vector of which, which way are we looking towards. Now, this is based on the camera, just in the camera position. So even if we move the camera, if we look around, it doesn't matter. It just matters where we're standing. So as we strafe around, as we strafe, we can see, um, you know, since the camera is moving, then you can see different parts of the cube map. So then we normalize the vector. Normalizing it just means that basically the vector is uh, of a length of one. Um, and that's just better for like, just for calculating stuff. Then we over here add a little influence from the camera direction. So first I was telling you is just the position of the camera and the position of the of our pixel that we're drawing. Now we also care about which way the camera is looking. Uh, and we can decide this. I added like a little float here. We can decide how much we want that to matter. Generally, you just want it to matter a little bit. It's kind of like the effect of looking through a window. You know, if you're here and you move like that, what you're seeing behind the window is going to change a lot. But if you're just doing this, what you're seeing behind the window barely changes. And it's mainly just because your eyes kind of moving a tiny bit. So basically this, this is kind of like a little number that just kind of adds a little more life there. Uh, then we added what is called a Fresnel distortion. So you see over here how the kind of at the edge of her, the galaxy sort of distorts and it just kind of makes the effect of being like around her. If I remove the Fresnel strength, now you can see it looks flat as it gets to the edges of her. You see those little stars, they remain flat. But if I increase the, the Fresnel strength again, now they basically, as they get to the edge, they start to, to deform and go around the contour. Uh, what is Fresnel? Fresnel, all it does is basically checks uh, the normal of a polygon and compares it to the camera. And basically the, the dot product of those two is what tells you what the Fresnel is. So what that means in a round uh, model like this is that as different faces have different rotations, it'll create like a soft little curve around it. Uh, so that's what, what Fresnel does essentially. Um, and I can show you by just drawing just the Fresnel. So if I create a Fresnel effect here and I just make it the color, so we basically none of the galaxy stuff is gonna render right now. You can see that's a Fresnel. So you can see around the, anywhere where there's like a lot of roundness, it's uh, it's white and then on the center it's black. And then I can just adjust um, the power here. And as you see, as I grow it, even the preview shows a little bit of what it's gonna look like. 
you know, the more I grow it, then the more um, it gets to be just like the outline. Fresnel is actually one of the ways that uh, you can do sort of cheap outline. It's not a real outline. Making outlines is actually quite complicated. So Fresnel is one of the cheap ways that you can do it. You can see it even in games. I'm pretty sure um, Overwatch, I've seen it in Overwatch. They use this as, a, as an alternative to outlines because outlines can be quite complicated to set up. Um, so if we go back here, let me hook this back up and let me delete this test. So that basically adds the distortion. And basically what it's doing is it grabs the Fresnel, which, which we just saw what it is. We put a, a, a distortion strength here and then it just adds to it. So that means that we started with a camera position to the, to the position that we were drawing. Then we added the direction that twisted it a little bit. Now the, the Fresnel is twisting the vector a little bit, you know, it's just like, instead of looking straight at it, because of the Fresnel, it starts to bend a little bit. So that's what gives it sort of that, that uh, distortion there. And then over here, we just sample the cube map. And this is basically the, where we're putting in the cube map. The sampler state is just to say what type of filtering it uses. Uh, and then down here, we all we use Fresnel again, but this time just to determine color. So basically we grab, um, we grab a color that we're deciding here is our Fresnel color. And that's what creates that little purple outline that you see around her. Uh, I split here the alpha and multiply that by the Fresnel, just so that I can use the alpha of the color to also regulate how intense that outline is. And finally, I just grab, um, I do a lerp between the, the color of the Fresnel and the, and the sample of the cube map. So where do I want to show that little uh, Fresnel outline and where do I want to show the space cube map? And this is what helps me decide. So as you can see, it's not very complicated and it looks quite well, uh, quite, uh, well, it's not very complicated, it looks quite good. Um, we can change, for example, here, this is the, if we change here, we can change the, the color of the outline. For example, that looks kind of cool with the blue. Uh, as I said, the alpha is controlling this. Obviously it can go a little nutty there. Uh, probably shouldn't go as far. Um, and we can change a couple more things. So for example, here, um, the Fresnel strength will, you can kind of tweak it. As you can see, it can start leaking into uh, various space. And you know, it's kind of cool if you can add like a little script doing a little boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then over here for the, this is for the deformation one. As you can see, if you start really going crazy with this, you can get to some values there that uh, do a very, very insane deformation. But obviously that kind of loses the original intent of the galaxy feel, which uh, I think this does the best. So that's it. As you can see, it's a pretty cool effect and it's not very complicated. Um, if you learn one thing from all of this, I would recommend um, paying attention to Fresnel super useful can be used in a ton of different effects if you want to see more of me i stream on twitch.tv slash pablo makes on mondays wednesdays and saturdays and actually this whole tutorial was taken directly from the stream so you can get a pretty good idea of how it works um, and also don't forget to like like and subscribe and all that stuff i'll see you on the next one adios Well, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.